Hello everyone, good morning. Welcome to Astra, the daily character page. Today it is Sunday, uh, the second Sunday in the month, in the year. So, January 14th. First of all, I wish everyone a very happy Bogi and everyone a very happy Sankranti. Right, in this context, let's have a look at what are the current affairs that we have quickly as far as the Hindu is considered. Some beautiful articles have been uh, visualized or has been uh, incorporated in today's uh, newspaper. Let's have a look at it. Ayodhya must to be better than Taj Mahal, says uh, the construction or the trustee of Ayodhya, uh, trustee of this uh, mask. Now, the Indo-Islamic Cultural Foundation, the trustee that is appointed to oversee the construction of mask in Ayodhya has decided to have a different approach for the construction of this uh, mask at Ayodhya. And this is a five minar mask which is for the first time that we visualize in the history or in the culture of India. So it is a five minars first in India. So they have said that this is going to be more beautiful than uh, the Taj Mahal. Now uh, it has been understood that it has been there has been quite delay in the construction of the mask in Ayodhya because of lack of administration, uh, because of administrative delays, and because of lack of money. However, with the new vigor and form that uh, Ram Temple is going to be constructed or is going to be uh, opened on January 22nd, so this trust also have moved and they have taken a decision to unveil the mask as early as possible. So, some good news for the religious. Uh, people in the country, be it Hindus or be it Muslims. So that is the first statement that you have. India picks Congress chief as chairperson. So the opposition party alliance, Indian National Development Inclusive Alliance has chosen Mr. Mallikarjun Karje as the chairperson. Indirectly, they have accepted him to be the prime ministerial candidate for the upcoming elections. So this is the thing that we have in the front page as far as UPS is considered. Next one is International Kite and Sweet Festival takes place or taking place with global flavors at parade grounds in Hyderabad. If you are staying here, you can have a visit at it. So this is the traffic jam that it has caused. So where you can write, you can write in GS paper for ethics. See, between Hyderabad and uh, between Telangana and AP, every festival brings huge traffic jam on the national highways and if you see every car here is a private owned car so despite the government having launched many uh, transportation facilities public sector uh, facilities like improved uh, the bus services still people are taking their own cars so this is up to you to analyze uh, and to write some uh, statements in gs paper 4 as well as in essay Free bus ride has improved healthcare access across the state of uh, Telangana, uh, Karnataka. This is what uh, the report says. So the survey has shown that the women made use of Mahalakshmi free bus scheme to commute. As a result, this has increased the bus travel and free rides to the people. So subsequently, it is a good thing to identify and subsequently, this is uh, a very good thing. So this is the advantages of this free bus ride to women. Majority of the people will only understand in one concept or will think only on one concept that free bus rides are going to uh, have extra burden on the state exchequer. Along with this, what we have to understand is not only this, uh, this is one part, this is true, but at the same time, it is uh, going to have some repercussion effects such as uh, increased healthcare access. So we can smile on the women who are riding here. This is called women empowerment. So in this context, you can write these things. Next one, only Pradhan Mantri can resolve Kaveri dispute says JDS Supreme, Mr. Deve Gowda. So this is regarding to the so-called Kaveri water dispute. Please have a look at the Kaveri water dispute tribunal. That is more than enough. Next, a very good article has come from uh, United States Trade Representative. So they have received the details from India on Social Security Pact. And they are going to do more. What is the Social Security Pact? Social Security Totalization Agreement is between USA and India. It is one of the key asks from India in the meeting of Trade Policy Forum. Now what it will do? It will contribute towards enhancing services trade between countries and help India IT professionals who temporarily work in the US. India has submitted all the relevant data. 
Now, under this agreement, an expatriate in either country needs contribute to the social security scheme of the host country. So, normally, what they are doing, so if there are temporary employees who are moving from India to USA, they have to take social security cover here, they have to take social security cover here. As a result, it is going to have dual burden. Hence, both the countries are saying that if they take only in one place, that will be accessible in other place also. So that is called social security pact. Now, what is social security? Social security is securing the persons from societal or from uh, some unforeseen circumstances that may be taking insurance policies, right? Uh, that may be uh, taking pension policies, these things. So this is called social security. As a result, both countries are accepting for it. This is just like DTA, double taxation avoidance agreement. This is also going in that Kamle context. Near complete dam Kane Betwa projected to get environmental law. So Kane Betwa has been completed, but still it is it has not got the environmental law. So this is something which is violation of environmental clearance, though the law has been though the dam has been constructed. So you can write this in environment. Union environment, sorry, union government has reconstituted EPFO governing body, Employment Provident Fund organization is the organization which will be looking after the funds that is pulled in the Employment Provident Fund. What is Employment Provident Fund? Employment Provident Fund are the contributions that are made by the employees uh, towards this fund during their uh, working period. So this is the thing and it has a board in order to overlook at it there will be a board central board of trustees is looking after this epfo however recently based on the trade unions call they have changed this uh, trade unions so some trade unions like intuc aituc aautuc the center has newly inducted the panel the trade union coordination so in place of them they have got uh, new people so they are changing it but that is not important if you are political science and international relations uh, student have a look at it because you have one thing called trade unions and their impact on uh, indian societies like that nyaya yatra which is going to be started by prime minister uh, which is going to be started by the opposition party leader uh, mr rahul gandhi is going to highlight the injustice says the congress uh, people jairam ramesh addressing the media you see it so the chief of Shankaracharya Mat has said that politics is not desirable in religious events and he is saying that in a secular country using politics for religious purposes should be avoided and he sees that the consecration of Ram temple on this January 22nd is purely on the religious lines and we all know that recently this person has uh, condemned the central government saying that the central government is going ahead with the consecration ceremony even uh, when this temple was not completely constructed so this was the criticism this person has did and he has carried with his uh, criticism even yesterday a high level meet between uh, the minister of external affairs of iran and india is going to take place as dr s j shankar our external affairs minister starts going for iran today now this visit is going to be extremely important for india as well as uh, uh, Iran, given the backdrop that US and UK has started targeting the Houthis who are present in Yemen and who is believed that they were supported by the Iranians. So in this context, this is the first visit that a high profile visit is being made to Iran from India since the war has begun in Israel. So in this context, this is going to be one of the most important things. India's engagement with Iran has remained on track despite continuous criticisms by Israel as well as by US on Iran, because hence this shows how India is exercising its policies in the external uh, arena uh, independently, unlike with due pressure from other countries. Significantly, explosion like incident took place in Israel. Israel has condemned that Iran is uh, responsible for it near the embassy of Israel. However, Indians were very slow in reacting to it. So, how the controlled events of uh, how the controlled areas of Yemen were targeted by UK. Despite all this, what is happening in the uh, is India is maintaining its ties with Iran. This shows that how Iran and India is becoming good friends or they are continuing their bond together. So very important for GS paper 2 as well as it is important for uh, PSR students. Center it to take a call on the beginning of HPV vaccine camp campaign for girls. 
Now, human papilloma virus vaccination. Now, what is this vaccination? We all know that Mission Indradhanush is available. Under Mission Indradhanush, recently the central government has said that uh, for girls aged between 16 to 18 years, they are going to give human papilloma virus. Now, what is this virus? This is the virus which is responsible for cervical cancer among the girls. As a result, to protect or to give immunity against cervical cancer, human papilloma virus drive is uh, uh, announced by the central government. However, it is not the center is yet to take call on the beginning of this. Recently, there were some reports. The committee took note of the reported deaths of some girls and adolescents in Kambam district of Andhra Pradesh following HPV vaccine trials carried out by American agencies. So, there has been some allegations against this human papilloma virus that this is uh, not tested properly. As a result, it should not be launched at the All India level without going for testing. This is what the parliamentary committee has been said. Hence, there was some hue and cry on human papilloma virus that has to be incorporated in the Mission Indra Dhanush scheme, that is Universal Immunization Program of Government of India. And the Hindu has reported it false. Kamam district doesn't come in Andhra Pradesh. It comes in the state of Telangana. So this is the error from Hindu. So please note it down. Next. In the next one, why is aviation safety under scrutiny? Recently we have seen that 737 MAX 9 is under scanner. Not important for us, leave it. What are the complaints about Digi Yatra? Digi Yatra app is the app which is launched across the, the so-called uh, uh, air, uh, aeroplane stations. Uh, in the airports, whenever you are going for check-in, you can check-in directly through the GATRA app. So, however, there is some uh, concerns on this. We are not bothered about that concerns. Let's know what is DGATRA. It is an initiative that aims to promote digital processing of passengers for paperless and seamless movement through various checkpoints at airports such as entry gate, security check area and boarding gate. So, normally you have to stand in big queues at the airports and get manually checked up uh, before you are allowed to enter into the airports but this is something which you are provided with a paperless entry or seamless movement at the airports this was developed by the civil aviation uh, ministry in the year 2018 and it is a voluntary program so there is no coercion <coughs> on the uh, uh, on, on the people who are going to airport to take it voluntarily after some delay it was rolled out in december 2022 so it was rolled out in the year 2022 at the Delhi Indira Gandhi International Airport and it is present in almost 13 airports today. So that is the thing that we have to know. It is not owned by government but a consortium called Digi Yatra Foundation will be owning it. So this consortium is led by five private airports belonging to Delhi, Mumbai, Bangalore, Hyderabad and Kochi. So the government does, is not implementing it. That is the thing that you have. Why has South Africa dragged Israel to ICJ? <clears throat> Yesterday, some students were asking, sir, uh, how can South Africa call uh, Israel into International Court of Justice? Why they have called it? We all know that uh, Israel, South Africa has approached the United Nations Security Council uh, or the Hague Court, which is present in Netherlands, that is International Court of Justice saying that Israel has violated the provisions of Genocide Convention and they are convicting or they are going for mass killings of the uh, Palestinians. And these are the allegations that was made by the South Africans or South African government. And how can ICJ has the power to ensure that this is going to be uh, a stop? We all know that ICJ's rules are binding. However, the only problem with ICJ is it doesn't have the enforcement capacity that is a thing. So in this uh, article they have given this, I am going to make a separate video on this and there is another beautiful article regarding the same, justice without power, this is speaking about how International Court of Justice, though it has power, though it has uh, uh, the power to give justice but it has no power to enforce its orders, that is the problem here. So in this context, how far this is relevant, they have given it, I am going to make a separate video on this, don't worry. Second coming. Just remember, this is about the Bhutanese uh, elections recently. In Bhutan, the 50-year-old politician, Mr. Sherry Topge, has come back to power and he is maintaining a cardinal relationship with India. In this context, India-Bhutan relationships are important. But this article carries about Mr. Sherry Topge. So this is not that important for us. But as far as India is considered, we are having 
some good relations. However, Bhutan is also looking at the so-called uh, uh, China as an important point of uh, capital. South India leads in the pension enrollment, says Mr. Deepak Mohanty, the PFRDA chairman. Pension Fund Regulatory Development Authority is the one which will be looking after pensions in the country. So Deepak Mohanty is the chairman now. Now this person is saying that out of all the total pension enrollment that is in the uh, new pension scheme or regarding to the so-called private pension enrollments, South India is stopping it. One of the biggest two problems for pensions or uh, uh, pensions in India is the lack of awareness among the people. As a result, many people are staying away from this type of social security benefits. Hence, uh, the chairman advocates that it is the responsibility of the government and the state governments to promote the role of the pensions and thereby to enhance people to take pensions. And we all know that pensions is a part of old age security scheme, old age social security. So in this context, this was given. Good article again. Next one. Sri Lanka is weaving India as a massive market opportunity. We all know that Sri Lankan economy is dependent on tourism and they are expecting more tourists to visit from India. In this context, this was written. Just remember, India is, a, India is one area where major tourism is dependent for Sri Lanka. Similarly, Maldives also has the same thing. So money gets away. Central tribes in Assam earn, certain tribes in Assam earn their livelihood by being in the modern system, in the barter system, by staying away from the money exchange. So this is the thing that you can have a look at it, a very beautiful one. So people still are following the barter system here and they are not following the money system. So this is the thing that we have for the festival and this is the thing that we have for this week or this weekend. Have a look at these things, particularly why South Africa has moved to ICJ and then though ICJ has power, it lacks implementation policies. So justice without power, that is a beautiful article. Please have a look at it. So these are the two things, Iran's uh, Indian visit to Iran, that is completely important for our GS Paper 3. So these are the things that we have in today's newspaper guys, uh, so nothing more, thanks for joining, I wish you again a very happy festival, good luck all.